this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and the seeming parade of affordable 8-inch Windows 8.1 tablets is continuing. Here we have the Toshiba Encore. We already looked at the Dell Venue 8 Pro, the Lenovo Mix 2 8. Now we have the Encore 8-inch tablet, same quad-core Intel Atom Bay Trail CPU inside. We're going to look at it now. So here it is, the Toshiba Encore. Again, it's available now, competes with the Dell Venue 8 Pro with the Lenovo Mix 2 8 and also with the Acer W4 that's a little harder to find in stores these days and that one we haven't reviewed. The other two we have so be sure to check out those reviews. And you're looking at pretty much the same stuff here. 8 inch display, 1280 by 800 resolution which yes it's not an iPad mini with retina display but it actually looks pretty darn sharp. sharp. But what you get inside of here is full Windows 8. 32-bit. So anything you can put on a Windows machine, desktop kind of applications, iTunes, Minecraft, you get the idea. You can put it on this. Like the other tablets, it's basically a rectangle. However, Toshiba, well, you know, I hate to say it, but a lot of their products, they've been hit with the ugly stick. This is a obviously and frankly plastic gray back it you know it's kind of an aluminum kind of color to it but beyond that it's also thicker than its competitors too it doesn't have uh, that kind of like when you look at it and you want to own it kind of look to say the least that is what it is that's what Toshiba does uh, another downer though is it's actually a couple of ounces heavier it is almost a pound where the others are more like three quarters of a pound so a significant difference in weight there don't know why that is. Ah, you might think, well, thick look, it almost looks like you could pull this back off, kind of like the Toshiba Thrive. We forgive it because it was so rugged, that old Android tablet, rugged, and you could take the back off, which you couldn't do on most Android tablets. No, this one is not designed to be taken off. It's not particularly rugged either, though. You know, a nice thick layer of plastic on here, it's not a delicate product either. We have stereo speakers that fire from the bottom. Not too much physical separation, obviously. They're not the world's greatest speakers, not horrible, but you know, it's an 8 inch tablet. How much noise are you going to get out of one of those? We'll, we'll demo some audio for you later. Uh, it can't compete with the Dell Venue 8 Pro, which has remarkably loud and full speakers for a small tablet. On the side here, we have our micro SD card slot, compatible SDXC cards. So that's a good place to put your media, your movies, your music, that kind of thing, because the 32 gig model, that's the one that's 329 Again, that's $30 more than the competition, though you might find it on sale. That, that model, you only have about 10, 11 gigs free to put stuff on on internal storage. Now, you could get a 64 gig model that brings the price up to a pretty expensive $399. So, and that one's a little harder to find in stores. Up top here, we have something a little special. This is the Toshiba Special Sauce. For some reason, these 8-inch Bay Trail Windows 8.1 tablets have not had an HDMI port. They all have Miracast wireless display, but not a lot of people have Miracast-capable TVs or receivers just yet. Netgear does make their push to TV. That If you get the latest model, that one will support it. But anyway, a little hard to find. So for those of you who don't have Miracast, here it is. Micro HDMI, just like you'd see on a smartphone. So... Just get a micro HDMI to HDMI adapter or cable, and you can actually plug this into your monitor or your TV. That could be worth $30 more to a lot of people, understandably. 3.5 millimeter combo audio up here, and we have our micro USB port, just like the other tablets. The charger plugs in here is a standard 2 amp charger, not unlike what you'd use with an iPad, and it's also a USB host port. And the cable, just like the others, is not included in the box. There's so much cutthroat price competition going on here that even throwing in a $10 cable is going to break their profits, apparently, so you don't get it. If you do get that host adapter cable, we'll show you what one looks like, you can plug in USB peripherals. This side here, we have our volume controls, and there's our power button. One thing to note is we do have actual capacitive home button on the front here. Obviously, with the 8-inch tablets, they're all oriented to using in portrait mode. You can use them in either way, but they tend to put the home button here. Lenovo Mix also has the button down here on the front. Dell goes with a physical clicky hardware button on the side, which is a little bit more, I think, awkward, weird. The display here, I think you can see, this is glarier than the competition so far from Dell and Lenovo both. 
Combine that with lower brightness levels here. This is about 300 nits. The Dell goes above just 400, and the Lenovo goes above 500. So that's great for combating glare. The glass just seems to be a little bit thicker or raised from the LCD substrate, so glare is a little bit more of an issue. Now, 300 nits is certainly enough for bright indoor use, but for those of you who want to use this outdoors, keep it in mind. It's not the brightest among the competition. Colors are good, but because of the glare, the minute you go off angle, it can look a little bit milky, even though this is a nice IPS display. It's just that's how much glare there is. Colors are pretty nice. They're reasonably in competition with the Dell and the Lenovo. Up front, right in the corner, we have our webcam. Not the most ideal location. Dell does the same thing, though, so what can we say? And on the back, we have a better than average in terms of resolution camera. That's an 8 megapixel camera. It actually takes decent photos. Textured, you can hear it, plastic back here. And that's our walk around it. And here we have it amongst the competition. This is a Lenovo Mix 2 8 inch right here. Here's our Toshiba. Now, size wise, obviously, Lenovo is a little bit more rectangular, shall we say, but there's not so much of a difference. Lenovo is thinner, it's the thinnest among these three. Significant difference in the thickness between these two. Lenovo also has a mostly plastic back, but it looks a lot more like metal, kind of classier looking. So I think with 8 inch tablets, we look at them sort of like our smartphones. They're personal consumer devices, not like a workhorse laptop. People do care about the looks. And here we have our Daniel Dell Venue 8 Pro, which has the textured black back, kind of a nice clean looking thing, also considerably thinner than our Toshiba, side by side, and lighter as well. Now, inside, I, this is it's turning into the same story as it was with, well, with mid-range PCs. I'm not, not talking about the high-end ones that tend to have neat bells and whistles that set them apart. You're looking at the same stuff that you're going to get on the Venue 8 Pro, the Acer W4, and Lenovo Mix 2 8-inch. That includes the same quad-core Bay Trail 1.33 gigahertz Z3740 CPU. Technically, yes, the Dell Venue 8 Pro uses the Z. 3740D, but the, the differences really aren't too important for the way these CPUs are used here. 2 gigs of DDR3 low power RAM sealed inside, not upgradable, and eMMC style storage, which is internal and it works more like a, an internal permanent SD card than it does like a, a SATA drive. So not the fastest storage medium, but that is what it is. Available again with 32 or 64 gigs of storage. You also get Bluetooth 4.0 and dual band Wi-Fi 802.11bgn. So really, the specs among these are the same, and the benchmarks among these are the same as well. Scored pretty much the same as our two competitors, PC Mark 7 2453, which is twice as fast as the outgoing previous generation Intel Atom. Actually quite usable at this point. You'll notice a little lag when you're doing things once in a while, but overall it, it's very usable, especially in Metro applications. W Prime and Computed Pi in 32.89 seconds. Geekbench 3, 793 for the single core, 2318 for the multi core. That's a 32 bit test because this ships with Windows 8.1 32 bit. Microsoft does not have the 64 bit version of the operating system available yet, even though Bay Trail, yes, is technically as it is a 64 bit CPU. You're getting a 32 bit OS here. As I mentioned, 8 megapixel camera on the back, that, that's better than the 5 megapixel average that we see on these kind of tablets, so that sets it a little bit farther apart. Battery life is also it's the same as the other two. The other two, it really depends on how you use these. You can go anywhere from 5 to 8 hours of use time, mostly depending on how you set your display brightness. Setting it at 50% brightness, which is pretty usable, and just doing average everyday things, mostly using for email, web surfing, playing back, 45 minute episode on Netflix, it indeed lasted us six and a half hours. If you're just doing more productivity oriented things and not streaming HD video, well, you probably could get closer to eight hours on it. Again, this is full Windows inside, and you know, it's pretty neat. Just a couple of years ago, we reviewed a lot of Android tablets, and people would ask, but can I put Microsoft Word, Microsoft's actual real Word, not Office compatible suite. Can I put iTunes in this? And I have to explain, no, it's a mobile platform, you can't. Well, guess what? You can do all those things here. Uh, from the benchmark performance, you get the idea it's about half as fast as a Core i5. This is not going to be a speed demon, particularly held back by the storage subsystem, which isn't the fastest, but you can run iTunes on this. You could probably play a little bit of Minecraft. If you're really crazy, you could play World of Warcraft. I really, really love settings if you don't mind slow frame rates and 
going with low resolution too, but that's the beauty of this tablet and, and its com competitors as well. You can actually run full Windows apps on here. You IT geeks that need to run specific Windows applications to manage your network or something like that, you can do that right here. And we have access to the desktop just like any Windows 8 PC. Just tap on the desktop icon and there it is. You got your My Computer and everything else. This is not the Windows RT version like you'd see in Microsoft Surface 2. Not Pro 2, just Surface 2. So you don't have any limitations here for what programs you can put on here. You're mostly limited by the amount of available internal storage, again, at about 10 gigs for the 32 gig model. You have the usual Windows on-screen keyboard, which is an excellent keyboard here. You could use an accessory Bluetooth or even a USB keyboard if you want. I think most people would go with Bluetooth. And we're just using regular full desktop IE here. If you prefer Chrome, you could put Chrome on here, but IE has better touch controls, honestly. So I stick with it for these touch screens. And here it's loading our site, no problem. I mean, it's full Windows, just a regular old web browser, not a problem. So let's take a look at our Dell Venue 8 Pro review so we can play some video and you can see here rather what it sounds like. 720p and 1080p video playback are not a problem for this. The CPU is more than adequate. Speaker volume is at 50% right now. Venue 8 Pro. This is a Windows 8 PC with an 8 inch display, only $299. We're going to look at it now. So that's, of course, Adobe Flash, since this is Windows desktop operating system we're using here. Speaker is not too loud, not too full. It is an 8 inch tablet. Dell Venue Pro. 8 does take the, the cake there for being really loud and full. 720p is what we're set at right now. It works just fine. Now, for those of you who want to use USB peripherals, this is a USB on-the-go host adapter cable. You can get these at Fry's, at Micro Center, maybe even Best Buy, certainly on Amazon.com. Somewhere around 10 or $15. The brand really shouldn't matter too much, to be honest. And it's a host cable. We're not just talking converting micro to full size. It has to have the right pins connected. So. This is the little micro end that goes into the device. This is the one that looks like a little USB port because, in fact, it is. So we're going to plug that in. And keep in mind, while you're doing this, you cannot charge at the same time. That is a design limitation for all of these guys so far. So we plug that in. And said we want to use this Passport hard drive right here, 2.5 inch self-powered hard drive, no external power whatsoever. Plug that in right there. Spinning up, making happy sound, the little LED on the drive is on. And this has played the Windows sound and it's opened up our file system right here. So yes indeed it works. Just like the Lenovo Mix 2 8 inch, but not the Dell, which doesn't provide enough power for unpowered hard drives. You can actually use one of these low power hard drives. And we're going to play a song off of here, just so you can hear. So there you go, we're playing music off of an external portable hard drive. And you're not limited to hard drives, though that's usually the more challenging use case. Often enough, you could use a CD drive, say you have some software you want to install that came on DVDs or CDs. Uh, you can use USB keyboards, mice, game controllers, that would be fun, right? All of them are good to go because this is full Windows. Anything you have regular Windows drivers for will work on this. That includes USB 3G and 4G LTE dongles, too. In terms of bloatware, you know, there's not a lot of space on here, so they don't overbloat you. Most of these things are really not much more than web shortcuts, these kind of metro apps. So they preload, as you can see, with Kindle, with Netflix. There's a 30-day of Norton antivirus on here and internet security. Honestly, it uses about 1% of CPU. That's what Norton self-reports anyway. But I would just go with the built-in Microsoft Security Essentials and ditch the Norton on something that doesn't have the world's most powerful CPU here. We have Toshiba Book Place installed as well. That's Toshiba's own bookstore. Obviously, you might want to use Kindle. You can use Barnes & Noble Nook application. You can use anything on this. It's Windows. If there's a client for it, you can use it on here. In terms of apps on the Metro Store, yes, there aren't a huge number yet, but this is actually full Windows, so you don't have to just depend on these applications here. But there, there's a decent enough selection. You've got all your weather applications. There's some games to play. You, you, Really, I don't think anybody's going to be too terribly bored with this. Obviously, you have a Netflix app right here. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can just watch that through your web browser the same way you would with your laptop. So who's the Toshiba Encore for? Well, first off, it's for those people that like Toshiba as a brand, obviously. I, 
my only misgivings are the fact that it's thicker and heavier than the competition and the screen is not quite as bright. It's not a bad product by any means and certainly it still offers the full power windows in, well, at least a large pocket. That's not so bad. But for that $30 extra that they charge, you do get a slightly better rear camera and most importantly for some people, that micro HDMI port. For those of you who want to plug this into your TV or give presentations, that can be invaluable. So that's the Toshiba Encore. Again, it's available now. Price is $329. You might find it for $299 if you look. And, you know, you're looking at pretty much the same stuff in all of these. A couple of things set each one apart. For the Dell Venue 8 Pro, it's that active digital pen. For this guy here, it's the fact it has an HDMI port. The question is, is it worth $30 extra if you don't find it discounted? And what do you think of this chunky look? I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.